Good morning, everyone. It's Matt with Downrange Warbirds. Figured I would jump on and give you guys an update. Probably going to get some judgments here, but I'm willing to eat that wrath. Uh, some of the stuff that we've been working on, I have been working on the wing spar, and I've been working on the fuselage that's coming along, plus the landing gear. So I'll show you bits and pieces of everything that I've got rolling, and we'll get you a uh, comprehensive update. It's not going to be as nice as the old video format, but my video stuff is kind of scattered to the four winds, and frankly, it takes forever to get that kind of content done. And I'd like to get some updates going. So, with that being said, let me show you what we've got going here. What you have here is the main wing spar getting skinned. All right, I tried doing it on a table, and I couldn't keep the tables flat. The basement, very, very flat. Not ideal in a basement, but I'm making sure that there's no water. Uh, everything is staying good and dry, so so far we're good from that standpoint. And as you can see, to make sure everything stays nice and flat, uh, We've got the uh, the heavy weights on the actual skin material. Some of the things that I found while doing this is it's a lot of surface area to actually have to uh, apply epoxy to. I switched over to these instead of the acid brushes. That seems to work. This last trip around, I ended up using 50, yeah, 50 grams of the epoxy and another... Uh, the appropriate equivalent, I think it was like 45 grams roughly of the uh, hardener. It's using a ton of material and I barely had enough. Spreading with these is kind of difficult. In the cold bank it's, uh, basement, it's kind of nice because the temperature is lower. I've got a longer set time so I can take more time to spread it. The drawback being um, it's thick. So your uh, epoxy doesn't go nearly as far. So that was a bit of a challenge, but we did get it done. Next on the agenda for this then is I'm gonna grab our little bower right there with the bearing. You can see the uh, offset bearing there. Stick her on the edge and then cut her out. So we'll just take that against there, run her, take that right against the side here, run her all the way until you hit there and then it'll give a perfect cut finish so the skin will match absolutely perfectly so that's kind of what's going on with the spar as soon as that's done um we're just waiting on the fuselage and i will go into the garage and show you where at with that next and now we're back onto the fuselage as you can see i got the lower skin hung so that got epoxied in there that was a little difficult to do uh, I had to get Brad to come help me actually get the skin on because there's no good way to move a 12 foot long skin by yourself after this has been epoxied because I don't want it to slide. I want to pop it right on top of exactly where it's going to be or pretty close within a half inch inch. Uh, the bottom turned out pretty good because you can see there isn't a whole lot of epoxy drag, a little bit over in some of the corners, but it's really not terrible. Um, Clean some of that up. You got some drippage where it did get some smudging, but it's not really too bad. Um, but it held up really good. So the skin is nice and tight with that. You can see how I did the mounting because this is staged. I still need to trace these for Brad. So we'll basically remove the skin completely, epoxy the frame, throw the skin back on top, and then these actually, these little hand clamps actually do a great job keeping that gap where it needs to be as you can see it actually does a very very solid job of keeping that skin down there and that same offset bearing router hand router that i had downstairs for the uh spar will hit just here just fine take that zip all the way around uh rolling this stupid thing around we had a break a breakage so i do got to make a repair again not the end of the world um when I'm done with this top skin, I'll clamp that in place, glue her back up, and then she'll be ready to roll. Um, unfortunately, but it is what it is, I may add an extra web too just for some support since that's going to hold a, uh, uh, a secondary fuel tank. So that might get an, uh, an additional web cut before I put the floor in. But uh, the next thing on that agenda too is you can see the markings here. That is for the control mount. Those are going to... Uh, the control bar mount so my actual flight stick will go into the mechanism that's going to get bolted in here so i need to drill those two holes i'll probably do that in the next couple of days as well um, i'm probably going to get this top skin done first but that'll get mounted in there because that control handle is pretty much done and ready to roll uh, so from that point we're definitely uh good once i get this uh left hand side skin 
done. Then uh, over there in the corner, I actually have the bottom skin ready to roll, and it's already been pre-trimmed to the rough size. So as soon as I trim down this skin, we'll be ready to do the bottom as well. So thing I want to get done first, though, is I want to get this mount drilled first before we do the bottom skin for obvious reasons. There is an access issue there. So we're going to solve that by not messing with it at all and just pre-drilling it while it's de-skinned. And then uh, as soon as that's done, we'll be ready to glue that bottom skin in. And this is going to be a very boxed off fuselage. And then we're ready to start uh, paint. Well, not paint. The, uh, the sealant. We'll get the wood seal in and we'll do the entire interior of the plane once this lower box is kind of in place. And then uh, all we have left is that uh, top skin. Top skin will be the least difficult of the bunch. Plus cutting all the lighting holes. So I believe the weight saving holes in the fuse start here in this faci facility, but I'll confirm that it's either here or here. So either way, we're gonna start cutting the lighting holes here all the way back. As soon as this thing gets epoxied in place, uh, that'll be on the tip. Um, Easiest way in the world to do that is because of that router offset instead of cutting from the top so it butts right up against the frame. We're actually going to butt it in this way. So we'll put the router in here so the body of the router dictates where those lighting holes are. So we'll end up with a perfectly even lighting hole rounded in everything because of the shape of the body of the router. So that's what we got rolling here. Uh, like I said, this did a great job with the glue up. I'm very, very happy with the results of that. So, uh, yeah, that's that. I will uh, show you the control mount when I get into the store here in a little bit, tack that onto the video, and then uh, show you some of the bracket modifications. So, uh, stay tuned. All right, I said we we're gonna talk about some of the brackets, and this is our control mount. I'm pretty happy how that turned out. Um, nice, solid, smooth movement. Maybe not the prettiest welds in the world on here, but uh, what matters is this is gonna track the way that it's supposed to. The only thing left to do on here is the lock ring mount. So I've got a ring that's already been cut in size for this. It fits, it also does not chafe. That'll get mounted flush with here. Uh, I've already drilled it out. I'm gonna actually shift over to the drill press here in a second and show you that, or what I've done so far. Once we get that sized with the right dimension uh, hole, we'll mount it on here, clamp that in place, zip it through here so we've got perfect alignment and the bolt should be here today or tomorrow so we should be able to zip right through that get that mounted as well and then we're ready to go and then this control mount is nearly done the only thing left on this is i've got two washers that are coming hopefully in the same package today that'll get welded here and here and then i need to cut out the center section because this is going to be where the actual flight stick control stick is going to be mounted right there so once i get those welded in uh, I'll have those set up, aligned, ready to go, looking good. Um, drill out the, uh, the follow-through holes as well, and then we should be ready to mount the actual control stick. So this whole mechanism then will be able to get mounted in the fuselage where I pointed out, and we're ready to go to the next step on that one. So give me one second, and I'll show you what we're doing with that ring over there. Nothing too fancy here. Mounted on the drill press. And that's set up so it's drilled all the way straight through. It's tough to see on that, and I'm not going to move it because everything's aligned properly. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to step this drill bit up another size to the right dimension as soon as I get the bolt and figure out what I need. And then we'll just follow through, chase that all the way through the bottom, and then we're good to go on that. We'll be able to mount that on this lovely device, and then we're off to the races. So that's the brackets, and let me show you the last thing that we're working on. So these are the brackets that had to get modified. So this is one of our projects. These are, this component is the upper trunnion. This is the upper strut. So this bracket, you can tell just looking at it, way too big. When I did the original CAD drawing on this one, it was too thick. I missed that. Um, additionally, this angle, way too high because this is supposed to be parallel to this edge. This is only supposed to be like a 15 degree bend, so that should give it vertical. And then we'll have two of them, a bar going through that. So we'll have one facing this way, and then that one, a bar going through it, and that's the rotation for the main landing gear. So this has been updated. Additionally, I got the completed drawings for the 
inner trunnion bracket. So this is the outer bracket. There's an inner bracket that has a shared hole as well. Angle should be good. Curve should be good. They should mate up directly to each other and fit. Uh, so all that stuff, when they get here later this week, we should be able to weld up. This is going to be the cap that's actually going to retain the upper trunnion to the upper strut assembly. This bar right here is for the lower strut. I have not started on that at all yet at that point. Not in a big hurry on that one, but uh, I have plenty of extra brackets, seeing as this one's not usable for anything else, so I can get some welding practice on to make sure before I do the real weld on the trunnion. Once that's here, we'll get those welded up and we'll be ready to roll. Additionally, this is just regular piece of steel, so there's the thickness on that. Um, well, that's actually the tube, but I've got a bunch of extra sheet steel from when I thought I was going to make these brackets myself. Um, those will get done, so I'll uh, make the straps, wrap those around here, and get those welded into place here probably in the next couple of days as well. So lots of uh, metal work coming and steel coming, plus we've got all the other metal brackets that are ordered. Uh, to start work on some of the other landing gear parts. So that's what's going on with our landing gear components. All right, final commentary on this sucker before we actually splice it up. Uh, so far, I'm pretty happy with the progress I'm making. I'm getting back into it. I'm probably putting eight, 10 hours a week in. I'd like to get a little more, but hey, we've got five other big projects that are going in at the same time. So still working on all that stuff. Uh, I put in a steel order from Aircraft Spruce, which now that I found out is a mistake, um, but that has the uh, that's going to have all of the steel required to build the tail wheel mechanism. So that should get done here pretty quick. Once that shows up, I'm really going to use that fixture ta welding table of mine. That's going to make building that so much easier to get it tacked together, squared, happy, aligned where it needs to, and then finish welding on that. Um, right after that, I started pricing out the, uh, the the requirements for the mechanisms for the main landing gear. Uh, they didn't have all the tube in the right dimension, so I did a just quick at Google, and then I found out, and I knew they existed, and it didn't even occur to me to look. Uh, Wix Aircraft Supply, they look awesome, but I'm getting that for like 35% cheaper than I'm getting from Aircraft Spruce. So the um, main landing gear mechanism, I started putting uh, putting that price list together. Steel's not cheap right now. Everything's expensive. Um, this is going to cost a bunch. But uh, with that being said, you know, as money comes available for me, I'll start picking up more and more pieces of this. But we're going to start with the tailwheel mechanism. That'll keep me busy for a little bit. And then I'll probably get the actual uh, hinging component of the landing gear. So it's just kind of a two fork that's actually going to mount to the trunnion. Uh, I'll probably do that because I've got those parts on order. Uh, as I save up a little more cash on hand, I'll get the superstructure that's actually going to go in between the spars. I'm not in a huge hurry for that because I can't even assemble that until I get the spars mounted on the plane and I know what the exact dimensions are going to be. So right now, it's not a huge priority. I can finish the upper struts. I can start working on the lower struts. Uh, I can get the mechanisms for the tail wheel, and then I can get the mechanism started for the main landing gear. So I've got plenty of stuff to be working on steel-wise and welding-wise. Next thing to get finished is I will get uh, tomorrow is going to be 80, so it's going to be a good day, and I have an extra set of hands available. So I will get the other side skin mounted and installed, and then maybe the bottom skin, depending on how things go. Uh, I might hold off on that just because I want to trim when it's set, not when it's still just you know fresh set, but when it's actually completely cured. But I'll decide how that is. We'll see how it looks tomorrow when I get into it. Uh, so that we'll, we'll finish up with the skins on that. Hopefully I'll get one, if not two more skins installed on the spar. I do need to throw a little bit of waterproofing inside of the exposed stuff that's going to be sealed in there just in case there's any moisture. I don't need any rot from the inside. Probably do that tonight. Hopefully we'll get one skin done and maybe the other skin. And then as long as that goes smooth, we'll do the rear spar. And then maybe in theory, hypothetically, by the end... By next week, end of next week, we'll have fuse will be completely done. The wing spars will both be mounted in the airplane. Um, and the lighting holes should be cut, maybe. It just kind of depends how much time I have available and how much needs to get done over at the bank project. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching and following all this. I love your comments. Uh, Don, appreciate all the stuff that you've been posting up advice-wise. I've taken a lot of it to heart applied a lot of it some of it you don't see some of you don't see the commentary but i appreciate all the help i can um 
everybody else that's been supportive of this. Thank you so much. So hopefully things something some things are working down the pipe. Hopefully I'll have a little extra cash to throw at this project too. And uh, you know, time is always going to be an issue, but as uh, the bank project kind of hits pauses for me, hopefully we'll be able to put more time and effort in this. So stay tuned. Lots to come. Hopefully I'll be filming a lot more of the steps again in the next coming weeks. Um, but we'll just see. It's all about time and where the equipment's all at and how organized I am and how much time I have for video editing. So thank you, everybody, and till next time.